I thought Richard's, he's, he's been great. You know, he, he got his first time out with two days of notepads. Then he got a day off on our first day. Um, today was his second day after a day off, which helped him recover a little bit from his one day of pads. And we'll see when we watch the film, but I was happy with him out there. Did you get a chance to watch him today going against Pierre in one-on-one -on -one drills? Uh, a little bit. I stay in the middle and I go back and forth between DBs and linebackers, but I saw some of them. On Sunday, he was tested by Marquis Deep, and then his first two against Pierre were deep. Is that something where you guys are just like, let's see what you got? Or is that him wanting to challenge himself? What's no, it's, I mean, I think we, I think right after we started with a go round in um, Richard, and then we do one on Akello also, it's kind of, you have to call go routes like 10 times in a row in one-on-ones to get those guys to back up. And you keep doing it till they do. And then you have a chance to run the other routes. So that's uh, something you go through everywhere from college football to NFL to everywhere I've been. Those guys are going to squat. They know there's no pass rush. Um, but yeah, that's just part of one-on-ones. Can you, uh, what's your assessment on Kelly Willis being? Looks like he had a pretty good day today. Um, perhaps with the defense, looks, looks like he's yeah. on it. What's your assessment on him going into year two, and what's your expectations of him heading into year two? Well, yeah, we have high expectations for Akello. You know, we obviously taking him in the third round. You know, we we had that coming out of college, throwing him in last year, and the way we he improved throughout the year. You know, he wasn't even dressing for a while, and then he got thrown in there. And you know, the way he ended up the season, he started playing um, close to his full ability. And you know, I know we have high expectations for him, and I know Akello does. Um, he's trying to take his game to a next level, and um, he's working through that right now. And, you know, I think he has some periods better than others, um, but I've been very pleased with how Akello's been battling and going after it, and um, he keeps doing that um, every single day. Uh, I don't see how he won't continue to get better. Philosophically, how many times does something need to happen to where you feel good about it, and how many times something need to happen to where you're saying, all right, it's a concern, we um, got to figure it out? Depends what it is, but it's... It's, I mean, you're either confident in something or you're not. And confidence is when you believe it's going to happen every time, it becomes automatic. And uh, usually that's from repetition and stuff, and you see it. And once you start to believe something, that, that's when you feel good about it. Sometimes you only need to see it once. Sometimes you got to see it 10 times. So um, it depends on the play, it depends on the person. But um, I think players and coaches all work through that throughout practice, throughout games. And you're confident in practice, you think it's automatic, and it's still not automatically seen in the game. So there's lots of things that go through that. Solomon, Solomon Thomas looked like he left early. Do you have any update on, on that? Yeah, I think he left for a little bit. Um, I think he banged ankles or somebody. I know I, he did finish practice. He, yeah, I was told he came back in and finished, so I don't think it was too big of a deal. But I'll see when I get in with Ferg. Jimmy Ward and, and Brock Coyle? Jimmy Ward and Brock both. Brock, we took him out in... Um, an individual. He had some tightness. We watched him an individual and didn't want him to go. We thought it'd be risky. And then Jimmy had some tightness in one on one. So right after one on one, we pulled him out. Uh, Eric Arm said, "Has a hammy." Yeah. So yeah, we found out. out. Yeah, yeah, I think it is somewhat. Um, you know, we found out about Eric and Cole yesterday. Um, you know, Cole is his groin, and I think he's going to be week to week. We'll see it. I think Eric might be a little bit longer since his hamstring. Uh, you have Julian Taylor go in in his place, a seventh round guy. What, what have you seen out of him through five practices now? Um, you know, he's he's got size, he's got power, and he's been pl been playing real well. So you know we were going to do that anyways, give him a chance because he's earned it by some of the reps he's been doing, and um, you know and then it made it pretty easy with what what happened to Eric two days ago. Um, seemed pretty good out there, but we'll see again when I watch the tape. You got a few guys, a few guys back today too. Uh, is there an overarching plan for all those guys, or all they, are they kind of different phases? I think they're all a little bit different. Um, you know, we, you know, I think all of our pup days, pup guys, we activated today. Uh, I think Malcolm was the only guy who really got in there. Everyone else was individual. Um, got to see a little bit of all of them. Um, for the most part, it was it looked good, but that was just a starting point for someone. We'll keep doing individual every day for them, and once we think they put in a, they're looking good in that, then we'll start to ease them into team stuff. Kyle, is every quarterback, do you have to kind of find a way to tailor how you want to challenge them from day to day? Every quarterback a little bit different that way. Do you feel like you've kind of figured out how you want to challenge Jimmy? One yeah, day? I mean, they're all... You know, they're all at different spots in their experience and reps of certain things. And, um, you know, not everyone excels at the same thing and struggles at the same thing. So, you, and it changes a little bit each day. You know, whatever someone has trouble with one day, you try to get, um, set it up so he gets reps of those the next day. And if he continues to do it, you keep pushing it. And um, guys that get stuff down, then you try to, 
pull them to other stuff. So that, that's why we script things and kind of anticipate what coverages are coming. You know, you don't tell the players and stuff, but as coaches, you make sure to get certain offensive plays versus certain defensive coverages because not only are you trying to do it to certain quarterbacks, sometimes it's an alignment, sometimes it's a receiver, but you're always trying to set these guys up so they and us can find out what they can do. Jimmy, specifically, is there something that you've really honed in on to try to challenge him on it every single day? No, it's almost something different each day. I mean, there's there isn't there's lots of things Jimmy needs to work on. There's lots of things we're all working on right now. Um, but no, there's, there's a ton here. Here. We're five days into our install. We got a few more left. Um, once we get through our entire install, um, it'll be sometime. It'll be I think three more days. Um, then we'll start to reevaluate and see where we want to go. Kyle, uh, Kendrick Bourne mentioned a meeting with you last year where you might be released. You weren't real thrilled with him. Um, do you think, you know, in retrospect, do you think that maybe served as a wake up call for him as opposed to how to kind of figure things out how to be a pro? Um, yes. I mean, I, you know, I think. He was never late again after that, so it was he. It worked for that case, and he probably would have wouldn't be here if he kept being late. So um, he definitely got better in that aspect. Sometimes people need to fail once or twice to really wake up and realize, all right, I know what everyone's talking about now. I won't that won't make that mistake again. And some people aren't afforded that opportunity. So you know, he was fortunate with the situation we had on our team last year. Gave him a couple of chances, and um, then he proved us right in terms of how he responded. Um, he was great. He responded to everything and really grew up a lot throughout the year, and I think that's why everyone saw his play improve as the year went. You said he didn't really he doesn't recall him saying a word during that meeting with you. You seemed to dominate the conversation. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't try to. I was just, I was very angry, so it came off. It was an, it was an easy conversation for me because it was very upsetting, and um, he made us happier after that. Can you take us through that fourth down interception? Was that, and it looked like it might have been an RPO. Did you just, yeah, it was just a play action. It's funny, our middle third safeties never cut anything. Um, I usually have someone, we usually have someone just run through that guy in that place so we can throw underneath, but they never cut anything. So we took Pierre and put him on a different route just in case Marquise wasn't open. And of course, the one time we did it, Marquise, I mean, um, what was it, Colbert didn't back up and made a great key. I think he was flat footed because of the run fake. And then, shot his guns and made the catch and got a pick six. So it was a hell of a play by him. Kyle, as far as Mike Person, obviously you had experience with him uh, in Atlanta. And why in May did you guys decide to reach out to him? Um, we ended up um, letting Zane go. And we knew we needed another um, guy to bring in. And also the fact that he was out there. You know, I hadn't been with him in a few years, so we brought in a number of guys to work out. You know, he looked the best in the workout. He's a guy who played center. Um, for us, you know, I think it was 14 games I had him as a center. Um, he played a little bit of guard for us the next year in 16, made it about halfway through the year. Uh, so he was a guy who was familiar with the system, is versatile, similar to how Zane was, and um, also was definitely the best of the bunch. How's, how's Ruben doing right now? Saw him limping in the parking lot. He banged, had a banged up right knee. Any, uh, any comment on that? Uh, I, mean, I think Ruben's doing good. I, mean, I know today he had, his quad was bothering him a little bit, but. Yeah, it's like Charlie horses and stuff, you know, so guys get banged in their quads a lot. So, uh, but nothing too concerning. That's why I was able to practice and do all that. And I think everyone's going a little bit through the wear and tear of camp. Was today the best that you think the pass rushes looked? Uh, it didn't feel like it. And, it. and it felt like it two days ago also. Uh, we've had three days in pads. I thought our first day I was, I was disappointed with it. I thought the next day I was extremely excited. And today it felt the same or if not better as our last practice. So I'll see when I get in, but uh, that was going to step in the right direction. I know they've talked about you know pass rushing as a unit, and maybe that means more games and different stunts and stuff like that. How do you assess just the chemistry that that group has in doing those things as a unit as opposed to just lining up? And I've them? been real happy with that group. You know, some of the new guys we brought in, bringing in Kiff and adding him to that room, um, just watching him and Z work together. I think the guys have really bought into um, what both of them are uh, preaching, and I can see our guys getting better each day. And I think our, all our guys, just their technique and their craft, they've really um, honed in on it, and it's showing to, be, <coughs> showing to me, and they're becoming harder to block. Forrest Buckner specifically looked like he was pretty dominant. He's been that way for a long time. But has he gotten a lot better in your eyes in anything that he's doing better? Yes, I, I believe I believe Buck's improving every day. You know, I, I think everyone knows how talented Buck is. He is a big man. Um, when you're a big man, you don't always need perfect technique, um, which is an advantage he has. Um, but I think he is um, taking huge steps forward this year, just watching how he moves some of his different um, pass rushes, having a little more tools to use. And he always has um, what he was born with, size and power. And that's where it starts. He seems comfortable coming in off the edge as well as inside. So, I mean, he's... 
basically can be an edge rusher if you need to also. Yeah, we're taking a look at him there, and we like to move him all over. And when, you know, when we're trying to rush the quarterback with our entire group, and he, it gives you a lot of different options. And we have some versatility there. We have some outside guys who can play inside, some inside guys who can play outside. And hopefully we can continue to develop that depth so every one of them who's up on game day who's rushing the quarterback is always 100% um, fresh and ready to go. You said everyone knows how talented Buckner is. He didn't make the NFL's top 100 list. Do you think he gets the respect he deserves from his peers? I don't know. I don't even know how that works. I've, yeah. I've never seen players vote on that either. So I'm curious on which players vote on it. Maybe there's like 10 of them, so it's a small percentage. But I don't know. I, I didn't know that he wasn't, and I haven't seen that. But he's in my top 100. What have you <laughs> seen from both Marsh and Atachi on the outside? Um, I, I see guys who have speed and they have athletic ability to make guys miss. So anytime you got some speed to get off, I mean that gets that puts pressure on tackles. And then you have the quickness to come back underneath. And um, you know, and they also have power. You know, they're not the biggest guys, um, but they're physical and they give all they can. And um, we're hoping with the group and adding those two guys and all the other guys we got, uh, we're going to generate some pass rush this year.